I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. I'm sure you can imagine how difficult of a decision this was for me to decide to speak out publicly. And the support I've received has confirmed to me that I did make the right decision. And of course, uh, it was very much needed given the uh, severity of the problem that's sweeping the country right now in terms of gang stalking and boys to skull. Uh, so I just wanted to take the time to say that. Yeah, I, uh, I began working at SIS. Actually, um, I have friends and uh, family members who are military and military intelligence. And through them, uh, I had always heard, um, you know, job opportunities. I thought about joining the Marines when I was uh, younger, when I was 18. I'm 39 now. So um, over the years, it was something I had always thought about. And, of course, after 9-11, um, so many jobs were created in the defense industries, homeland security, and what a lot, of, a lot of people don't know about is within private security uh, domestically within, within the United States. It's a booming industry. It's one of the fastest growing sectors of our economy as uh, generally our society is being militarized and generally uh, that militarization is being privatized. And as a result, what you have is many, many corporations in the United States of America and private companies uh, that are getting a lot of money um, from investors under the table to begin to set up what I describe as a security um, apparatus around and within the United States of America. And it is in that context that I heard of the opportunity to work for security industry specialists in uh, Seattle, Washington. Uh, they're a private security company that is headquartered in Culver City, California. And through a friend, I heard that SIS was hiring. I heard they were hiring for security specialists. And given my background uh, in education, which is uh, actually anthropology and sociology, um, most people don't see how those two connect. But by studying human beings, uh, you can really do well within the intelligence uh, industry and within the security industry because it is all about uh, learning how to deal with and talk to and communicate with and ultimately, from our perspective, secure human beings. And so it was through uh, friends and family that I learned about the opportunity. And I started off, like everybody else, as a low-level security guard, um, minimum wage. I worked my way up through the company over time and uh, eventually was assigned to uh, executive protection and uh, threat assessment, risk management. And just to tell you a little bit about that, what my official duties were was to secure uh, personnel, data, and property uh, of VIPs that our company is hired to protect. So there's a whole lot of training that goes into that. And um, I became a security specialist for SIS, specializing in executive protection, also risk and threat assessment uh, to our clients. Our clients are the companies or the individuals that we contract out with and provide services for. And it was in that context uh, that I became aware of uh, what I describe as a social engineering program and uh, a research and development program that was being carried out by SIS uh, and our clients in Seattle, uh, the Amazon Corporation. And it was through moving up within the SIS um, hierarchy and working with more and more people as I was assigned to more and more assignments, I became aware of these, the existence of this program. And then little by little over time, I became aware of the extent of it. And it wasn't long before I realized how horribly out of control it was, how downright evil it was. Once I began to realize that SIS was experimenting on its own employees, my fellow security specialist, I was outraged. I later learned that um, my company was involved in a larger social engineering program that encompassed the entire city of Seattle. That aspect of the program was experimenting on the homeless population of Seattle, Washington, uh, who were housed in DESC, Downtown Emergency Services Center uh, facilities. And I later learned that they were indeed experimenting with, when I say experimenting, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification technology that is frequency-based and directed at a targeted individual to basically control their entire person. Um, and it was uh, 
by moving up even more that I realized that this experimentation was going on uh, against the general population of Seattle. And then just the average man and woman on the street, upper class, um, upper, upper class, and even the flat out rich were having this technology used on them without their knowledge. Uh, as more and more informa information and details of the program became uh, were made known to me, I became more and more outraged by it. And I spent a long time, because I had many friends within the security company, a lot of these people are great people. Uh, they're very good people. Not everybody involved in SIS is directly involved in experimenting in pe on people. They're not all directly involved in gang stalking. I never was. I never partook in that. Uh, but I did partake in training uh, that deals with tactics and protocols that are used uh, normally for surveillance and counter-surveillance. Uh, but within that is the all of the information and the know-how that you need to be able to gang stalk, and that is, in fact, what they are doing. Um, and so over time, I, I became outraged, and um, I tried to play my cards right, wait for the right moment. And uh, when I really just couldn't tolerate it anymore, when I found out just how out of control it was, I decided to object to my superiors in person. But within SIS specifically, what happens is they are uh, experimenting on their own employees. So uh, it's a long story. I'll try to get through it quick. But basically, people are selected from all over the country. Um, we're talking other cities all over America. They are selected uh, for many different reasons. Often it is because they are isolated. They don't have a lot of money, friends, or family. And they also tend to be people that are highly, highly intelligent. Um, the aspects of this technology that they're interested in improving upon have to do with cognitive processes, processing information, and as a result, they want highly intelligent people to be targets of this program. They also tend to target people who are into what I would call alternative research, uh, commonly called maybe conspiracy theories, people that disagree with the government, people that are into researching things like 9-11. Uh, also, they are interested in people that are interested in technology. I have found a high percentage of targeted individuals to be people who either are interested in or have information on highly advanced technologies usually having to do with directed energy weapons and frequency weapons, uh, the exact kind of weapons that we're talking about here that are used uh, in voice to skull um, and behavior modification, the works. There's many other aspects to the technology. But once these people are selected, um, they will have the entire gang stalking slash voice to skull program run against them. This is detailed in my article. Uh, but they will be organized stock. They will have career um, sabotage programs run against them to ruin their job. They will have character assassinations camp campaigns run against them in their neighborhood. They'll be isolated from family and friends as those individuals are turned against them. And they will be isolated slowly and slowly over time using the technology itself. As uh, many of the people freak out understandably when they at first don't know what it is, Oftentimes, they end up going to psychiatrists and uh, false diagnoses of schizophrenia, manic depression, uh, delusion, delusional paranoid are rendered against this individual. And it turns out that that's a loophole in the law, law that they are using to take away people's constitutional rights as once you are deemed mentally unfit to care for yourself, i.e. you're depressed, delusional, paranoid, etc., they use that, uh, the state or the federal government uses that as, as an excuse to come in and say that they have to care for you. So I would warn all targeted individuals out there, please do not go to psychiatrists and, and, and allow them to render a diagnosis against you because that is a dirty trick they're using to take away the rights of people all, all over the country. Uh, that's a great question. I do not have direct knowledge of that personally in terms of an individual, how they are selected. What I can speak to intelligently, though, is that each individual fits the general profile that I'm describing. So they're highly intelligent. Uh, they are able to be isolated by whatever means. They normally have some sort of a, what I would, what I would describe as a free mind. They're people that aren't, um, you know, part of the crowd, so to speak, in the way that they think. Um, 
you know, they're outsiders, they're what the government would call dissidents or revolutionaries or people that may be a problem. Uh, some TIs have, have said that this kind of profile that all TIs fits uh, is empowered individuals, and I would definitely agree with that. Um, but I cannot speak to how they actually identify an individual person. I think um, okay. the general profile that I'm describing that fits uh, the targets of this program is something that is generated high up within the program. We're talking at the federal government level. We're talking at the highest levels of this social engineering program where scientists from all over the country and all over the world, they're looking at someone's genetics. They're looking at someone's cognitive abilities. They're looking at someone's uh, genes. Uh, they're looking at someone's DNA. They're looking at people's um, social situation. They're looking at people's career. I've been very surprised that so many PhDs are actually targets of this program, um, and they're usually PhDs that have gone against the grain in terms of what academ academia normally teaches, uh, usually within the fields of science and technology. And the reason for this is because people running the program want to cover up certain technologies and certain aspects of science that can lead through to tremendous, tremendous breakthroughs. Um, these highest levels of science and technology are the sole purview of classified sectors of our government and military. And as a result, uh, it is not the opinion is that the American people do not have the right to this information and is in the national security interest of our country to keep it classified. Um, and so that, that is, is the answer to your question. What I will do, though, is take this opportunity to distinguish um, really quickly between the larger phenomenon of TIs uh, that is usually a, in a, a person in America that's being uh, targeted by the technology and is being gang stalked by members of their community and the specific program that I am um, whistleblowing on. The specific program I am whistleblowing on involves uh, the actual abduction of TIs from around America they're put on a Greyhound bus and they are shipped to Seattle where they are, are made homeless. They live in one of the homeless shelters where they are housed and experimented on with voice to skull technology. And then they become, are, are uh, funneled into SIS to work as low level security guards where they are experimented on even more. Um, so that is a specific program and that's what I detail in my blog and my website. But because I am familiar with that program that utilizes the same tactics of gang stalking and the use of this technology against individuals, uh, my knowledge on that program applies to what all TIs are going through. It's the exact same technology and it's the exact same uh, gang stalking tactics that are used against them. In terms of numbers, I know that there are right now at least three to 400 individuals in downtown Seattle that have been abducted from all over the United States, brought to downtown Seattle, and are being housed in DESC, Downtown Emergency Services Center, um, homeless shelters, and being experimented on 24-7. Uh, the numbers of SIS employees that have been experimented on, to my knowledge, is in the dozens. Uh, that's all I have direct knowledge of, though, uh, about 24 to 36. And then nationwide, uh, the estimates in terms of targeted individuals who still maintain some manner of autonomy and freedom and have not been brought to Seattle or enslaved completely by this, uh, the estimates I have heard is anywhere from one uh, to two million at the moment. And we're talking full-blown TIs that get the technology and are being gang stalked 24-7. Those are the estimates that I'm familiar with. The, uh, this is discussed very much in the open. Uh, within SIS and with uh, some of the liaison contacts that I had with DESC, Amazon, and then also members of the military uh, that are in a civilian capacity. Uh, one thing you have to understand is that within the security uh, business, most of the people working there are ex-military and ex-intelligence operatives. And many of them, in fact, are still active intelligence operatives and are, have simply been reassigned to domestic duty to work with a private security company, specifically for the purposes of carrying out this highly illegal program that's being run against TIs all over um, America. So full-blown TIs, what I would call people that are getting the voice to skull, the frequency, and the organized stalking, I have heard is between one and two million, and that could be completely off. But one of the things I'm concerned about is the technology as it's being researched and developed in Seattle 
utilizes emotion manipulation and behavior manipulation uh, without the gang stalking and without the voice to skull aspects. And so this use of the technology can be done very covertly to the point where the person it's being used against will not know that this technology is being used against them. And that is one of my main concerns and one of the reasons why I want to bring more light to this technology and to this issue because this technology could potentially be being, be being used against tens to hundreds of millions of Americans every day. I, rec- I um, mentioned in some of my podcasts how there are field effects where they will not direct this technology at an individual but create a general field of frequency in a geographical area so that everybody that within that geographical area is feeling the effects of the technology. It's more of a general application of the technology instead of an individual specific application of the technology. But when you consider that use of it and the fact that it is used for emotion and thought and behavior modification, then we could potentially be looking at many, many millions of people across the country that are under the influence of the technology uh, today, right now. The area of the geographical areas that I'm familiar with are limited to the size of maybe a downtown area of a city uh, so that the frequency that's being emitted by the device um, will have an effect on a, on a geographical location, let's say downtown Seattle. And so what they can do is within this general field, they can um, broadcast a frequency that affects human beings within that frequency field and can induce a general mood of, let's say, happiness or sadness, anger, agitation, peacefulness. And in this way, they can have an overall effect in the city. And I have seen this done, and it is remarkable how effective it is because you will walk down the street of Seattle and literally see people all in a bad mood all at the same time, and they do not know each other. And then you go over a block or two to a different office building, and you walk in, and the exact same thing's going on there. It's very, um, it's very, very concerning. So within that then, that overall bubble or, or, or area of frequency where everybody, let's say, is in a bad mood, they can still inject uh, what would be an individual-specific frequency to the targeted individual themselves, let's say the homeless person in Seattle that's being experimented on 24 hours a day. So they will be under the influence of the general agitated mood or bad mood that everybody else is in, and then they can more further be manipulated by the frequency that's being directed um, solely at them. Absolutely, yes. That is exactly what the uh, people running this program have in mind in terms of application uh, of this particular feature. It is to, uh, or at least it can be used to induce riots, for example, or stop riots. It could be very, very dangerous, and it's a great point you bring up about traffic patterns and auto accidents. I mean, this is, this is messing with the innermost part of human beings, their emotions. And so you can imagine how irresponsible it is to actually manipulate someone into being a bad mood, in a bad mood and manipulate everybody in town into being bad, in a bad mood. And then they get in their cars and they drive around where their, their own safety and other people's safety is at risk. It's a huge, huge problem. And you can imagine the applications of, of this. If anyone ever wanted to start a riot, if ever, uh, anyone ever wanted to increase the crime rate, um, And then, of course, you know, you can use it for the exact same opposite. You can use it to decrease the crime rate by making everyone passive. And that could have nefarious applications as well. If you want people to to be passive and not pay attention and and not uh, take action, uh, it can be used for for that as well. So, yes, the the mind is boggled by the possibilities uh, in terms of what this could be used for. The radio frequencies, um, microwave signals, uh, the entire spectrum, Um, of radio frequencies can be used um, within a certain range uh, to produce all sorts of different effects. So the the way it works is a device broadcasts a radio frequency, let's say at an individual, and that radio frequency will hook up with the resonant frequency of the individual's mind or body or, in this case, DNA. And what happens is once the resonant frequency is found in the targeted individual 
and the broadcast frequency matches up with that resonant frequency, those two frequencies interlock and they can be thought of as one frequency or one energy. And what happens is between the broadcast frequency and the individual that's receiving the broadcast frequency, once it's resonating, uh, once they are resonating together, a, a super highway of frequency along which information can be sent is created. And so you can think of it just like fiber optic cables that you use to send uh, signals over the Internet that connect people to the Internet. It's the exact same thing, only a wireless application of that. And so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the in individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software, and it can be monitored and tracked in real time. It can literally stop your own thoughts from happening and replace them with other thoughts uh, by sending thoughts to your head. And it's so sophisticated that you cannot tell where these thoughts are coming from. There's no way to, to discern that they are coming from somewhere other than your own mind. So you can imagine how bad this would be for people that don't even realize this technology exists. And they're having these thoughts which they think are spontaneous because uh, being under the influence of this technology now, kind of having been on both sides of it, I am, I am just amazed um, at the way it works. And I know that the thoughts that they beam into your head originate from the exact same place in your mind that your own natural thoughts originate from. So if I didn't know I was under the influence of this technology, then I would have no idea that anyone was influencing my thoughts at all. And that's exactly what it can be used for. It can be used to sway people in terms of their opinion, to make them go along with a certain agenda. It can be used to turn groups of people or individuals against each other uh, for whatever purpose. And uh, actually, this exact same technology can be used um, to not only influence the thoughts of someone, but also uh, the voice box of someone. And it came to mind because you mentioned a politician. I heard that they actually used this uh, on George Bush uh, Jr. once. George W. Bush, when he was giving a speech because he could not remember his lines. I have sent you a comprehensive energy plan to devastate communities, kill wildlife, and burn away millions of acres of treasured forests. Chabad save lives. Uh, this is the type of thing that could be used to give a politician the words that they need to say. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. So that they will come across and deliver the message in the way someone else wants them to deliver this. Uh, deliver the message. So messing with people's thoughts uh, is really, really concerning, and it is so advanced now that they can do it without people even realizing it's being done. And the thing that shocked me about it is it's not being done, you know, in a secret military base somewhere, and it's not being done in a controlled environment where people are being kept safe and separate. You know, the test subjects are kept separate from the general public so that nobody gets hurt. The entire city of Seattle has been turned into a massive proving ground for this technology. And it's being done right out in the streets. It's being used against people uh, that are driving. It's being used against people that are trying to live in a city environment with the congestion and all the other people around uh, that you have in that environment. And so the potential for accidents and things to get out of control and for people to get seriously hurt and indeed be killed by this uh, is real and it's happening all the time and yeah, I think it just shows just how not only out of control this program is but how completely unchecked the research and development um, aspect of our national security structure has become uh, they are completely immune to any oversight, to any consequences, to anything they're doing. And I just could not believe that this research and development part of this program was so advanced and was so widespread and it was so out in the open um, in places like Seattle. And I encourage anyone that's in Seattle, please do go there or that's near Seattle. Take a trip there and spend a week, you know, 
on vacation, if you got the money to do it, I would recommend it and, and visit DESC and visit SIS at 1415 Western Avenue, Seattle, Washington. Visit Amazon. Visit the Apollo, Nessie, Bigfoot, Cricket buildings. Um, visit these places and begin to look around and observe, and especially if you're a TI that knows the symptoms of the technology because you're an expert in it because it's being used on you. Um, you know just as much as I do. Well, maybe not the version that I'm aware of being used in Seattle, but you're getting a version of it, so you know what to look for. Go there and, and, and watch the homeless people. Watch their behavior. Look at their teeth as all the people have their the, – one of the effects, I'm sorry to say for GIs out there, is this technology will actually radiate the teeth right out of your mouth uh, prematurely. And I know – uh, in Seattle and elsewhere, people are in their 30s, you know, the brush and floss every single day that are having their teeth just, but I eventually end up, ended up in Aurora, Colorado, uh, right next to Buckley Air Force Base. And um, it turns out that this town as well is a major hub for this social engineering program. Aurora, Colorado is a town that has a massive, uh, a large percentage of military personnel that live here. Uh, the adjacent base, also intelligence, uh, families um, live here as well uh, when they're assigned overseas. This is where they would live when they're back on the home front domestically. And you can tell that this uh, technology is being used uh, on the people of Aurora, Colorado, many of whom serve in the military. And as I mentioned before, it's not only the general population of Seattle, the homeless and TIs, but this technology is being used against military families, people who proudly and bravely serve their country and uh, sacrifice everything so that you and I can be free, or at least we were able to be free before this, uh, this technology uh -huh. started yeah. being used against us. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's here as well, and there are some other cities. It seems to be adjacent to military bases. I've, I've heard this from a lot of people, and I've noticed it as well. If you have a massive Air Force base uh, near you, uh, Navy as well on the coast, um, there is a there's a good chance that some aspects of this program are being uh, run at the adjacent military base and is being used on the the towns and the people around that base. And uh, I was not aware either of just how widespread uh, the security industry was in terms of its numbers and in terms of its power within the United States of America. Uh, you're absolutely correct. And uh, it's a great point you make, uh, a million personnel. I mean, just think of that in terms of standing armies. Uh, look up some of the uh, numbers on active military personnel in countries like Russia and China and the United States, the European Union, and you'll start to understand just how many, you know, one million uh, people uh, are and what can be done with that type of manpower uh, in a situation like this domestically. So. One of the things um, I think that, that is an advantage of the security industry, number one, it's private. So if you were going to roll out an army of gang stalkers across the United States to mess with people, to track people, to surveil people, to follow people, and to make their lives uh, a general hell uh, to live every day, then you would have to do it covertly. You would have to do it in a way that is not noticeable to the rest of society. And in fact, the tactics that are used by private security companies and gang stalkers at large are specifically designed to avoid detection, not from the targeted individual, but to avoid detection from the general public. And so it's a, it's a very interesting surveillance situation. It, it fits right in with other surveillance situ situations where they want the targeted individual to know that they're following them. And so in a normal surveillance situation, you do not want the person you're following to know that you're following them. They actually want the TI to know they're being followed because it has the maximum psychological impact. While at the same time, they need to do it in a way that your neighbors and your friends and your coworkers and your family do not know that they are doing this to you because the entire point of the program is to convince everybody else that the, the TI is crazy. And so they need to surveil you and gang stalk you in such a way that other people don't notice that they're doing it. And so what happens is I was actually with a friend when we were driving uh, from Seattle and I decided to leave. It was one of the last friends that I was able to have before this massive organizing, organized stalking campaign uh, completely destroyed uh, my life as well. And now I'm completely isolated as well. But I was driving with a friend, and we were being followed by people, obviously gang stalkers 
and uh, military intelligence in my case, but they drive in, in, in regular vehicles. They're in modern uh, trucks, SUVs, sedans, every kind of car. Uh, many of them are toy or excuse me, Chevys. And uh, if you're being, I think a lot of TIs uh, have noticed this as well. Chevy seems to have some kind of a deal with these security companies. And I know, for example, my security company uh, purchased most of their vehicles from a particular car company. So these are some of the things I noticed. But we're being followed by these people. And what they will do is the otherwise unmarked car will have military stickers on it. They'll have license plates that say Air Force. They'll have stickers that say Marine Corps or Army. And um, generally, the personnel as well fit, fit a general description. A lot of them have tattoos. A lot of them are young. A lot of them um, appear to be, you know, very young, maybe a, a military type of a look, only with kind of a, a gangster type of a, a vibe to them. And I think that's for the purposes of intimidation. And I know... Uh, that is one of the psychological aspects of what I learned at SIS in terms of gang stalking is the image you're projecting is very important. It is scientifically planned down to the last detail to have a very specific psychological effect on the target. Um, but anyway, we're driving and we see all these cars around us and they all have military and uh, Marine Corps, Air Force, and my friend said, you know, is that the Air Force following us? Is that the Marine Corps following us? Are these people, you know, military? And it's a very good question. And it's, they are trying to give that impress, impression that who's following you is active military. And, of course, that's not the case at all. They are private security contractors, or they are at least intelligence operatives that are operating domestically under the cover of being a, a um, private security contractor. And the reason they put those stickers there is to give the impression they're military. And so what you have a lot of times, the way they get license plates that say Air Force engraved on them is they are former Air Force. The way they get some of these uh, insignias on their car, they are former Marines, and they are now retired. And after active duty, a lot of them need jobs, and they are being hired by the thousands each and every day to staff private security companies all over the country. And private security companies and private investigators, what they do is they investigate, they surveil, they follow, and they carry out covert intelligence and investigative operations domestically in a way that can't be protected. It's the perfect way to carry out gang stalking operations against TIs. And the, uh, the number one rule uh, in intelligence work and in, in security work in terms of uh, at least people that are going to be surveilling the public is to remain undetected. And so in terms of a profile, they go out of their way to hire people of diverse ethnic backgrounds, um, each gender, all age ranges, more or less. Um, there's obviously limitations if, you know, uh, if you're too old to be able to follow people on foot. Uh, but I've noticed a lot of the mobile uh, details, a lot of the mobile assignments will be carried out by uh, the more elderly of the private security contractors because they can't be operating in an inner city, for example, uh, on foot, walking up hills and so forth. People with disabilities as well uh, cannot do that. So there'll be mobile units. Uh, static and mobile units are the two basic units you have within private security, and then they're assigned to different assignments. Um, but, yeah, as, as far as the profile, uh, they are ex-military. They are ex-intelligence. Uh, many people, um, like myself, have no ties to that, but they start off, um, low in the company as a security guard, uh, maybe executive protection, maybe risk uh, threat assessments, maybe they have an IT background so they get in that way. Uh, and then they're trained little by little to be led into the gang stalking and kind of the covert aspect of the company, which is involved in this social engineering program domestically to target TIs. Uh, and so what you have is in terms of a street gang stalker, the kind of people that will have constant contact with uh, the TI on a regular basis for the purposes of being known as gang stalkers to the TI, they will have a, a certain profile physically. Uh, the men will often be very strong. They work out. They're buff, for lack of a better term. Uh, they will have a generally intimidating demeanor, although when you talk to these people, of course, they could be completely nice, um, very, very decent people, most of them. They're just they're doing their job, and I don't think there's any way they have to get out of it. Because they all know if they, if they come forward and they say something, then they're going to get gang stalked as well. 
And unfortunately, I, I'm proving that by the way that I'm being targeted and gang stalked, and the technology is being used against me. Um, but this is this is the general appearance that they give, and so it's to be intimidating. And there's a very fine line between kind of the military intimidation and what you would call a gangster or a thug intimidation. And both aspects, of course, are there on purpose. And gang stalking has been designed specifically to have both aspects there. Uh, they want you to believe that your country hates you. They also want you to believe that you're in great danger all the time. And the thug, gangster aspect of the vibe that they're giving off is there specifically for that reason. And so you can start to see how psychologically this is going to have an effect on someone very, very quickly if they're under the impression that the military, their own government, and then a bunch of thugs are following and chasing them around the country. Uh, okay, it has a devastating psychological effect. There is a um, precedent, I will say, that I'm aware of for hiring people that have displayed a certain moral uh, ambiguity concerning certain issues. Uh, for example, uh, within certain private company uh, security companies in the Seattle area, there are a lot of ex-LAPD. Um, in fact, when the Rodney King riots went down and a lot of the scandals that went on, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, the LAPD went through several stages of reform, and anybody from LA, of course, will remember this. And the people that were forced out of LAPD ended up almost exclusively going to work for private security companies. So you can imagine the types of characters uh, that ended up in private security companies when the LAPD didn't want them anymore. Um, also, people that have criminal backgrounds are often, I, um, coveted for gang stalking type of assignments. Uh, the reason for this is that they do not mind, obviously, mistreating other people. Uh, they have what could be called a criminal mentality. Um, but it's also important to note that despite the unsavory characters that are within this, the entire point of it uh, is a hands-off policy. And this is very, very evil, the way they're doing this. So, uh, I mean, not in any way defending them. I'm making the opposite point. The hands-off policy is in place by private security companies and gang stalkers, the federal government, and everybody else involved in this, specifically to have the excuse and say, we didn't actually physically harm this person. We never struck them. We never shot them. We never hit them. We never did any physical harm to them. So everything that's done by this program is meant to have a psychological effect, and the psychological effect is meant to complement the effect that the technology is having on the individual so that they are brought to a place in their life where they're isolated, they're broke, they're unemployed, they have no family, they have no friends, and nobody in the general public can track or trace anything that's being done to them because the technology is remote and it's wireless and there's usually no physical signs left on the individual that anything is being done to them. And the interaction with gang stalkers within the community there is no physical evidence that any gang stalking ever went on. They are specifically instructed, you know, do not slash anyone's tires. Don't, you know, uh, vandalize their house. That is not the point of the program. The point of the program is to have maximum psychological effect and leave the minimal amount of evidence. And so you can see how this hands-off policy, and this is a standard term that's used within the private security industry in terms of what security guards and security personnel are supposed to do uh, in terms of a threat. You are supposed to maintain a hands-off policy uh, at all costs until you absolutely must intervene physically or with, or with use of force. And so that's kind of a, uh, an industry term that's been adopted by gang stalkers as a hands-off policy against the TI so that when that person ends up in a hospital or ends up physically deteriorated, they can't turn around and blame the gang stalkers because they were never quote-unquote touched or physically harmed by them, even though all of the harm that's done to TIs is done by the gang stalkers, it's done by the federal government that endorses this program, and it's done by the technology. And therefore, the gang stalkers, the technology, and the federal government is liable and responsible 100% for everything that's been done to the TI. Nobody advertises you know, on Craigslist that we're hiring you to harass and torture people. It's just not done. And 
I can speak personally for myself and I can speak personally for the people I worked at, with at SIS that when you do first find out what's going on, you are disgusted by it. You cannot believe that this is what's going on. There is also a very quick, um, almost a peer pressure induced acceptance of it that causes you to say, you know, this is pretty cool. And I'm just being flat out honest here about the psychology that's going on within these people's minds. It's pretty cool. We're, we're part of the group. We're part of the massive army of people that is going to be okay no matter what because we're on the right side of this because we're the people with all the power. We're the people wow. that with ties to the intelligence agencies. We're the people with ties to the government. We're the people that are going to be okay no matter what because, you know, we are willing to violate the law to get away with whatever we want to get away with. And our superiors and our bosses are as well. So as long as we make them happy and we do our job, we're going to have a pretty good life. And I can tell you that this is exactly what is done to people um, almost immediately upon the revealing of what is really going on. They are offered a series of incentives. They're offered, uh, first of all, acceptance into the group. They're offered um, acceptance into what will be the future of America, that you will be set, you and your girlfriend, or if you're married, you and your wife, your husband, your children, are going to be taken care of. You're going to make a lot of money. You're going to have brand new cars every couple of years. Your kids are going to go to the best schools, and you are going to be connected, for lack of a better term. And, and at this point, it really does take on almost an organized crime feel to it because what you're, what you're dealing with are people that are pleasing their boss in order to do something that is absolutely illegal. They're, they're monitoring and harassing and, tor- and torturing and sometimes leading to the death of American citizens. They're violating their civil rights. They're violating their human rights. They're violating basic human decency. These is, this is horrible stuff that's being done to people. And so you have to understand the psychological aspect that goes into convincing gang stalkers and people that are part of the program to do what they're doing. Uh, it is a very, in fact, the psychological operation that is run against gang stalkers themselves and people that participate in the program is just as advanced, if not more so than the psychological program that is run against TIs. It absolutely is. And so what you have is this very intense psychological program that's run. In fact, uh, one of the things that I'm not sure people are aware of, but I'm trying to cover this on my site because I have direct knowledge of it, hive minds, voice to skull, emotion manipulation behavior, uh, modification technology is being used against the gang stalkers themselves and against people in the program. And it is being used to assist them in doing their job, specifically to take away their conscience, specifically to take away their empathy and their sympathy for the individual, for the targeted individual, so that they don't feel bad, so that they don't feel guilty about what they're doing. They are, are, you know, many times intelligence agents and soldiers are trained to get the empathy and the sympathy out of their system because you're going to be asked to kill someone for us. You're going to have to go on the battlefield and shoot someone, and you're going to shoot them just because we tell you to shoot them. And so a lot of the stuff that goes on in basic training and in terms of training intelligence operatives is designed specifically to make sure that people will pull the trigger when they need to. And stuff like human decency and love and compassion and empathy and sympathy and caring for your fellow human being does not enter into the decision-making process. And so the exact same thing is done within the program, within the Voice to Skull gang stalking program. And it is done not only by peer pressure and direct training, it is also handled by the technology that can manipulate the people's emotions to turn off empathy and sympathy and love and care and compassion and to turn on what I call almost a mercenary hired gunman mentality. And the reward for going along with this is you get to be part of the social group. Look at the Mm -hmm. TI and how isolated they are. Look at how horrible their life is. Look at how sad it is. And every time I think about it, I start to choke up. It's so overwhelming. My heart just naturally goes out to these people, and I want to help them. But when you're the gang stalker under the, use, under, under the influence of this technology and the influence of the peer pressure and everything else, you don't feel that. And if you do, the technology is going to take it right out of your system. But look at the TI, how isolated they, they are. You're not going to be isolated like that because you're one of us. 
these are your people. Look around at all the other gang stalkers. Look at all, around at the military and the intelligence services of the United States of America. Look at the local and state police. Look at the social workers. These are our people. You can date any one of these women that you want. You can date any one of these men that you want. Heck, we'll help you hook up. You can come and party with us and go out to dinner and do all the things that people do together. And that T.I. can't. That T.I. can't because of X, Y, and Z. That T.I. can't because he's on the wrong side of this. You're very, very lucky to be on the right side, and don't you ever do anything to mess it up because you will end up right where that T.I. is. You're not going to be one of us anymore. You're going to be isolated. You're going to be gang stalked. You're going to be tortured 24 hours a day by the most horrific technology ever conceived by the mind of man, and you are going to die, grow old, and die alone. And unfortunately... You know, now I'm saying that I have a self-realization moment. I mean, that's exactly what's happening with me. And I can totally and completely understand how that is a very, very effective strategy to get people to go along with being a gang stalker and to help cover up this program. The entire point of this uh, social engineering program that has been researched and developed for decades now uh, the full intent within the program, everything that's planned going forward, the day-to-day -day attitude of all the people, is that this program is going to be rolled out nationwide, and it will become the norm. Every man, woman, and child in America will be under the influence of this technology. Every man, woman, and child in America will be one decision away from having gang stalkers turned against them. And the people making these decisions, of course, are not answerable to the American people. They were not elected. They did not pass any tests or go through any gates of initiations, to, initiations to, to, to prove that they're worthy to have this responsibility. They just make the decision, and you're a TI, and that's it. Every single man, woman, and child in the United States of America will be under the influence of this technology. And as you can see, going forward, What's going to happen is a, is a dividing line is going to be drawn in America. And it's not going to be Democrat or Republican or black and white, rich, poor, you know, Jew, Gentile, religious differences, whatever it is. It's going to be based on who is on the right and the wrong side of this technology, who is on the right and the wrong side of this program. And so if you are not a part of this program, then there is a very real risk that you are going to become a full-blown, 24-7 targeted individual. And this technology at that point when it is nationwide will be used by automated computer, supercomputer software programming uh, that will manipulate the emotions and the behavior and the thoughts of everybody in the United States of America. And it can all be done remotely. It's very much like the, the microchip kind of uh, tracking the New World Order, this entire, you know, uh, control grid that's supposed to be rolled out against the American people someday. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it's already here. There isn't going to come a day where there's troops in the streets and tanks rolling down uh, your neighborhood and riot gear and all this stuff. We might have isolated incidents like that. It might get like that every once in a while, but the, the true control grid is this technology, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior manipulation technology. And it can all be done remotely. It can be done simply by targeting you with the frequency, locking into the resonant frequency of your DNA and your mind, and in that manner completely track and trace and control you uh, 24 hours a day. And so the dividing line is going to be between people on one side of this technology and people on the other. And so if you are a gang stalker right now, if you're in the private security industry, if you're in the military, intelligence, local state police, community watch groups, what have you, the reason so many people are joining into this, the reason so many people end up on that side of the fence is because it is the only game in town. There is one side, and you're either with us and you're, or you're against us. And so going for, you know, that's exactly what I had to think about when I decided to make this decision. That is exactly what went through my mind, and that's why it took me so long to decide what to do about this because, you know, it is, you are, you are marking yourself. You are, you are standing up and saying, hey, everybody, look at me. I don't like you. I don't like your program, and I'm going to do everything I can to get it shut down. And I was fully aware the entire time that I was, you know, thinking about doing that, exactly what was going to happen to me. They were going to torture me. They were going to 
destroy all my relationships with friends and family, and I was never going to be able to make a living again. And in my mind, it just came down to the victims. It came down to targeted individuals all over America who are suffering every single day, who are crying out for help, who are curled up in a ball in the corner in their bedroom in horrible physical pain and horrible emotional pain and know that nobody will help them. Everybody calls them crazy. Everybody says, you know, the, there's something wrong with them. Friends and family abandon them. Their, their relationships with their significant others are ruined. Their kids are taken away from them. And the homeless people in Seattle are now homeless. Some of the most brilliant men and women I've ever known in my life as I got to know them are now homeless. And they have no way to get out because the DESC is specifically making sure, going out of their way to make sure they can't get jobs and they can't find homes. So if a gang stalker wants to think about coming forward, this is, this is the d- decision that they face. Um, but, you know, are you willing to risk everything to try to save this country, um, to try to save the individual out there who's on the receiving end of this program and is suffering and needs our help. And I'm hoping that by me coming forward and doing the best I can and for surviving as long as I can, I will inspire other insiders and give them the courage and the hope they need to make that decision as well and see if we can't start making some progress against this thing. What is going on in America today is exactly what you just said. Some people are being recruited into this program and some people are becoming the target of this matrix system of technological and signal intelligence and human intelligence control of the individual and of society. And that is exactly uh, what goes on within not only the private security industry, but the program as a whole in Seattle and what um, was done to me after I decided to come forward. The, the choice is very clear. You either, you're either with us or you're against us. And all of the resources that they cut you off from when you're a TI, like I am now as a whistleblower, uh, the jobs that you can't get, the coworkers that you can't make friends with, the, the relationships you can't have with people, all of that that you cannot have is exactly what the gang stalkers are being promised if they join. That's everything you can have and more. We're going to give you money. We're going to give you access to the finest women and the best drugs and the best connections and the best jobs and the best life that you can possibly imagine. You made it, and this is your ticket to the top, and you're going to come to the top with us. This is exactly what these people are being told. It is exactly why these this seemingly inexplicable behavior by our fellow human beings. This is why it's happening, because they are being promised the sun, the moon, and the stars. They are being promised the opportunity to be a part of history, to be a part of the ruling class, to be a part of a system that is not defined by appearance of camo and military machine guns and the, the American flag and God bless America and all the stuff that you associate with power in America. These are people that look exactly like you and me. These are people that are wearing their hats backwards and baggy jeans. They're people that are dressed in modern attire. They're people that rock the modern vernacular and slang. These are people that go to the same bars and clubs that we do. These are the people that go to the same schools that we do. These are the people that watch the exact same videos on the Internet that we do. They are like us in every single way. They are, they are Americans first and foremost. And because the nature of this program is so covert, that cover must be maintained at all costs. And so this is why you see kind of this profile of the people that are, are targeting you. They're, they're, they do not fit one particular profile. If you're in corporate America right now, I guarantee you you're going to get corporate gang stalkers. And that is the whole point of it, that they have people in all levels of society, all ethnicities and socioeconomic backgrounds, and they can activate them one by one and group by group, wherever you are in the country. And unfortunately, if, if you're on the wrong side of that, you have access to no of those, none of those resources, and you are looked at as an outcast and an outsider and someone that you just can't be part of it. Okay. Um, there's a few questions that I have. These people that are doing this, the gang stalking, they're doing it on the pretense of that we're criminals, correct? Uh, correct. Really quickly, yes, that is the premise that they use to uh, 
to assassinate your character amongst gang stalkers. Uh, usually there's no actual crime that's been committed, so you're not in fact criminals, but yes, that is the lie that's told. Well, no, I know I'm not a criminal, but yeah. that's how they get them to do what they're doing. Correct, yes. Normally there is uh, part of the uh, character assassination campaign that's run. There are lies, there are rumors that are spread about the targeted individual. And so in, it, in relation to the TI, uh, all sorts of stuff is said about them. Uh, in every case, it's never true. So I can testify as a gang stalker on that side of it that all of the gang stalkers know it's not true. Uh, but the, it is used to generally degrade the character of the TI uh, so that they're looked at, you know, in general as a scumbag. You're absolutely right. Okay. All right. And is there a production team that is in charge of that? Absolutely, yeah. There is a command and control structure uh, that is uh, in charge of normally um, a targeted individual, so any elements of the program that need to be run in relation to that TI will be coordinated by a supervisor, and the supervisor um, will work with people that are in control of the technology on one side, and then the organized stalking or the street theater on the other side. So you do have a very uh, stringent uh, command and control structure. The one that I was a part of, of course, involved SIS and SIS exclusively. Um, but I have heard from others and general knowledge of the program that's being run around, this could involve people in local uh, and state police as well uh, as what I would call intelligence uh, operatives or assets. They are private corporations that do stuff like talent, uh, agencies recognizing talent, logistics specialists, technology specialists, and then uh, coordination specialists. One thing I just wanted to make one mention of something I see happening up here, and it has to do with the police stations here are now putting in mental wings for the mentally handicapped instead of private institutions or anything like that. I don't know if that's happening anywhere else. But that was very creepy to me. In the major police stations, they are putting in mental wings. So they will be in charge, more or less, is what wow. I'm saying. Wow, I haven't heard that. That's very scary. The question I wanted to ask is with the DNA, when you have somebody's DNA, you can then realize the tendencies they have towards certain diseases. With this knowledge, do you have any idea whether they're planning or already are, how do I want to say this, um, um, stirring up that particular tendency and creating that particular disease in that person? Well, thank you. That was a, a great question, and thank you for the info concerning the mental wings and the uh, police oh, scary. stage. Oh, scary. Absolutely, because that is exactly the pretext that they use a lot of times to get the excuse to target individuals is, you know, obviously coming up with a false psychological diagnosis. So thank you for that. Um, the, That's the DNA. Health. That's where I live. That's where it's happening. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, as far as the DNA goes, in principle, in theory, what you're saying is absolutely correct. Uh, frequencies can be used to manipulate someone's DNA and then, uh, help to bring about what is a otherwise natural tendency within their genetics. So I can confirm that that's true, and I can confirm that uh, within the scientific research community, that's being done right now. There's DNA-based research that's being done normally to cure diseases, obviously, but it, if it can be done to cure diseases, then certainly someone with more nefarious goals in mind could, could use it to engineer diseases and to bring things about. Uh, so that is absolutely a major concern, and I think that's one of the reasons we have to get a hold on the entire research and development apparatus of this country, the entire program, the way things are done in secret, and scientific advancements are siphoned off for military and intelligence purposes first, and then everybody else gets them. And the problem so, with so that is exactly what you said. Isn't being done yet? Uh, not that I know specifically, no. I cannot say that I have direct knowledge of that. Uh, what I can say, though, is that Amazon has billions and billions of dollars invested 
uh, in a program that is used to study just those things. So if we wanted to find out who might have that knowledge, Amazon might be a good place to start. And I think you indicated that they won't hurt us big physically or vandalize or sabotage our property, but I've had all of the above. Um, I've literally been systematically maimed through workers' comp medical procedures. Uh, my entire back, my spinal column from my skull all the way down to my tailbone has been sabotaged. Um, I was, in fact, at a, at a third lumbar ESI procedure, I was brutally forced under anesthesia screaming uh, for the doctor to stop. And when I woke up, my entire back had been maimed and muscles were pulled off my back. I had injections throughout my back, my neck, my shoulders, uh, injections into my liver, into my esophagus, um, all the way, I mean, prolific damage. I'm now disabled. Uh, so is that part of the military government experimentation or was I placed there, do you think, can corporations like insurance carriers or employers place their uh, people into these programs? Absolutely, yes. And Cece, I'm very sorry to hear about uh, your condition and everything that happened to you that is horrible, and I can't imagine the pain that you're in. And um, I do want to just clarify in terms of the hands-off policy, I'm, I am in no way suggesting that these people do not harm people physically. Uh, I was, I'm speaking about obviously a, what is a general uh, rule and a, a general um, outline that people follow. With specific um, people, they could very well cross lines and borders and, and do that sort of thing. Um, in terms of the medical, um, this was done under surgery. So it could be that the, the doctors you were under the care of uh, were very much not concerned at all with, with your well-being. It sounds like they really messed up the surgery. And when you woke no, up, they, you were worse off. Intentional. This happened over a period of a year and a half, and it just kept getting worse. And I, I couldn't figure out why I kept getting worse until the last lumbar epidural, which was the third one. Even the physical therapist maimed me. But I had already filed wow. a, a complaint at the California um, Physical Therapy Board, which was totally which was completely treated with disregard and, and disrespect. So um, uh, I know that the state of California is involved in my stalking and uh, the crimes that have befallen me, but I'm also hit with directed energy weapons. I get the dream manipulation, the dream interrogation. By the way, the dream interrogation has been a lot about my medical history, have I ever hurt my back before, how I was hurt at work. So that's why either they want me to believe that my employer and the defense and my workers' comp claim is behind this, or I don't know what, because it sure seems like that's what they want me to believe. So I'm, you know, I'm going with it, although I am a whistleblower, and I blew the whistle on a previous employer uh, a few, uh, few years ago as well, and he told me that he had friends in high places that could make my life very difficult. And uh, shortly thereafter, bizarre things started happening at my home uh, so, and at other places of employment. And that was before I ever got injured at work. But I don't know. I, I, I often say, God, I hope you don't let me die before I know who has done this, who, who is behind all of this garbage. So um, anyway, I, had, I, I believe that my targeting is corporate-driven. And we that know makes that, sense, yes. And, and we know that uh, the United States is a corporatocracy, so, uh, you know, it makes sense. And you say that Amazon, uh, what do they do? They offer up some of their employees as part of the, uh, of part of the what, protocol or the program? Absolutely, yeah. They actually have uh, volunteered. They have dedicated entire buildings for the purposes of experimenting on their own employees and SIS employees. But absolutely what you were saying um, in terms of California officials and them being involved, that, those are exactly the people that would be in the program in place to, to mess with a targeted individual uh, like yourself. So that, that definitely makes sense. You want my supervisor's name and guilty parties? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah there are uh, most of these names are actually available, but I will go ahead and name some of the people in SIS: uh, Zimmerman, um, 
Brenninger, Venturini, CEO is John Spisak. In, in what capacity? S P E S A K. S I'm sorry, S P E S A K. John Spisak. And uh, the command and control su- um, structure is such: there is a Dennis P. Hatton that is a watch commander uh, that I worked under. The command and control s- structure is such that the uh, supervisor, direct supervisor, is contingent upon your assignments. Uh, and this is one of the ways uh, that I think is an interesting point with how they kind of compartmentalize the programs within um, SIS and companies like this so that other people don't find out about it. There is not a company-wide command and control structure. There is a assignment-specific command and control structure so that when you are assigned to a specific assignment, you have an immediate supervisor that you report to, and that's it. And so the one supervisor, for example, might only be overseeing two, three, four, five um, security specialists at a time. And so you have all these little cells within the company that are completely cut off from each other so that the lines of communication and information do not flow between different aspects of the company so that they can um, compartmentalize and keep classification on certain information that they don't want getting out. Uh, so I worked for many different people. I was there. I was assigned to many different assignments. Um, but I, that was a very good question because it, it shows how it is organized. You were talking about how they tried to uh, make everybody into being a scumbag, um, so to speak. And um, but most of the most of the people I've spoken with are women, you know. And there's like, you know, women that are beautiful and attractive. There's women that could be your grandmother. Um, and you say they try to make everybody, you know, can't come up with some stories or whatever. How do they hurt like women and grandmothers and kill people's pets? Isn't that horrible? Yeah, yeah. Well, first, thank you for your kind words. And I do want to say that I have heard estimates up up to uh, 70, 75% of targeted individuals are, in fact, women. And it absolutely breaks my heart because I can't understand the mentality of men or women as well that would actually prey on and torture and abuse uh, a woman, a single woman. It's just horrible. These people have children. And you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, they're tearing families apart. They're, they're doing it to children as well. It's, it's certainly, it's completely out of control. Um, but in terms of smear campaigns, character assassination, um, what they have is thugs. And uh, perhaps, you know, there are elements of this that even I'm not aware of. But I am aware, for example, that my life has been threatened. I am aware that people are killed within this program all the time. And they bring in highly trained specialists to do that. They usually have intelligence connections. So in terms of the real dirty work that's done, there are people uh, within the program that are capable of doing that. And they do it because they get paid a lot of money. And they do it because they've been guaranteed by the higher-ups in the program that they're going to get away from it. What I can speak to is the involvement of defense contractors in general. Um, I have heard, of course, through people like Karen uh, Stewart that Lockheed Martin uh, does employ organized stalkers of their own in 47 of the 50 states. I have not been able to independently verify that with my sources, but it certainly makes sense. Um, what I do know for a fact is, of course, defense contractors are involved in the research and development of the technology going back decades. And uh, if anybody wants to learn more, I would suggest looking up patents into things like microwave auditory effect, the voice to skull, the behavior modification, uh, frequency weapons, directed energy weapons, go back to the work of Nikola Tesla and uh, look on down the line throughout history to see who the scientists were that were working on this and then see the connections that they had to certain aspects of the military industrial complex of our of our country. So defense contractors are involved. I, I am sorry, though, I don't have direct knowledge of Lockheed Martin. Are you aware of any antenna arrays that are doing the broadcasting? This is interesting. I'm glad you brought it up. It is one of the most classified aspects of the technology in terms of my knowledge of it and the average security specialist knowledge of it. Uh, You have things broken down basically into a technical department and what I would call a personnel department. 
personnel handles the actual uh, monitoring of the technology and the gang stalking. You then have the technical side that monitors the infrastructure, the actual building of devices, antennas, cell phones, towers. So I do not have direct knowledge of that. But I do know that it does utilize antennas, radar, and cell phone towers. And I think radar, um, I know for a fact, is being used for military bases. I know some of the antennas are being uh, camouflaged within buildings, other structures. They're, they have entire walls and structures built around them just to hide the existence of the antenna. So you can see the effort that goes into covering up the, the locations of them. And as a result, they're the most classified part of the program. And I do not know any specifics on that other than they're out there and they're everywhere already all over the United States because this system is operational countrywide. You mentioned that the artificial telepathy people are connected to hive mind. With remote neural monitoring, that's what we call the process of them uh, hearing our thoughts and looking through our eyes. I want to know what you call it. And my last question is, uh, can you, do you have any documents that you could put online uh, regarding this program um, that we could all access? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Alec. Uh, remote neural monitoring, uh, in terms of the, the uh, terms that I call it, uh, much of it is slang derived from uh, security industry specialists, so it's kind of like a street-level slang that we use for it, hive mind, voice to skull, remote neural uh, monitoring. There's some, some rather coarse terms that we use as well that are very descriptive but not very scientific. Um, but the remote neural monitoring is, is one that is, I think, the, the main feature of it. Uh, that they are able to get the information from people. And so that is the aspect I think that is going to be used uh, very covertly against everyone in the country to read people's thoughts, to see what, they're, what they are thinking, and then determine whether or not they're a threat to the power establishment or to the individual motivations of companies or, or local officials or whatever it might be. Also, thank you for the information. I spoke with you earlier, and uh, I really appreciate your help on that. Uh, in terms of documents, I do. Uh, I also have people that I am in contact with uh, within the industry, potential allies that are sympathetic to our cause and are behind the scenes waiting uh, for the right moment that are behind the scenes, hoping that the general public will become more aware of this issue and will give them uh, the impetus that they need to start to move behind the scenes to make progress against it. There are a lot of people that are against this program and that support TIs, but they are in highly, highly classified positions. They are threatened if they speak out, and they also, of course, have family and friends to think about. So we do have allies there, uh, and I do have documentation, um, and I am planning on releasing it. I do not know when because I'm also planning legal proceedings against the federal government and possibly my former employer, DESC and Amazon, and my lawyer is advising me at this point not to release that, uh, but it, depending on how that goes, very soon I may be able to do that. I had a question. Do you see yourself as stepping up and testifying for some of the TIs that are gathering evidence to go to court? Absolutely, yes. I would be willing to help uh, anyone that is bringing legal proceedings against the program or against the government. That is my main goal in coming forward is to attack this from a legal perspective. And I would be uh, happy to lend my testimony or my efforts to anyone that's pursuing that goal. Okay, one other thing really quick. Are you a victim of V2K? Yes, I am. I am a victim of V2K, emotional, the, the works. I have got a uh, beta version, I believe, of what is going to be rolled out against TIs in the next couple of years. Um, my company was involved in a research development program of kind of the next generation of voice to skull and the frequency weaponry. And because uh, I knew these people and I decided to blow the whistle on them, they gave me uh, the most nasty version of it. Uh, it is highly, highly advanced. It's one of the reasons I've had a lot of problems getting relief myself uh, is because I'm dealing with something that is, um, I think only the military would, would have and know about. Uh, in terms of its its advanced state. So yes, I am getting all of it 24 hours a day. Uh, I'm currently homeless. I've tried five other jobs since I resigned from SIS. And uh, I'm un under constant torture, surveillance, and gang stalking 24 hours a day. Well, what sort of things are you getting, V2K? What kind of things are uh, they telling you? That is interesting. Uh, the main one that they repeat all the time is, please be quiet in not so uh, nice terms or we're going to kill you. Uh, they tell me that everybody is against me. They tell me uh, all sorts of stuff. One of the people, uh, the lady that mentioned that the state of California 
uh, was involved with her medical problems where she messed up her back and the voice of skull was telling her that it was her corporation or the, the company she was working for. I hope I get that right. Um, but that's what they do. They beam into people like me's heads um, all sorts of stuff to try to turn people against each other, to turn companies against each other, individuals against each other. And so what they do to me, I think, is very similar to what I've heard from a lot of TIs. They'll turn TIs against their family. They'll turn, turn family members against TIs, for example, and coworkers. And that's what they're doing with me. They're trying to manipulate me. They're trying to turn me against former employees, to, uh, employers, excuse me, people I used to work with, family members, friends, people I'm meeting online. And it's just a constant 24-7 back and forth. Don't trust this person. Do trust that person. Don't trust this person. Do trust that person. Don't you dare try to work again or we're going to kill you. Don't you dare try to contact this person or we're going to kill you. Uh, don't do this or we're going to uh, slander you and, and smear all sorts of stuff all over the papers. We are um, very disappointed in what you decided to do. Uh, we're going to they, – they have been sending stuff into my dreams as well. It's constant 24-7, and luckily because of my training, because I know all aspects are technology-induced, and because I have a bit of training in gang-stalking as well, my response to it is always, number one, I know who it's coming from. I know who these people are, so I'm not listening to any of it. I go out of my way to judge things for myself and come to my own decisions. And then when it comes to gang-stalkers, I just gang-stalk them back. I'm only one man out here, but I try to take them on and, and fight fire with fire and stand my ground and just at least try to maintain the status quo so I don't slip further down into the darkness, so to speak, where they're, they're trying to put me.